Well, Merry Christmas, you guys. Good to see your faces tonight. Man, what a great evening we've had just singing together. Druba, that was awesome. Thank you so much for sharing. That was fantastic. <laughs> Blessing to me, really. Um, Merry Christmas, though. It is, it is great uh, to be together. And I would bet that if you asked anybody on the street, what is Christmas all about? I bet that people would respond with the same answer that the Grinch concludes with in his famous story, you know. Uh, You know the famous story of the Grinch. He goes into Whoville on Christmas Eve. He takes all the toys, the decorations, the food. He goes up on his perch and he waits for Christmas morning. You know, he's hoping to hear just the waves of sorrow, the wailing or whatever it is, but morning dawns and everybody comes out and they sing. And Dr. Seuss has this, you know, famous line, even if you haven't seen the movie in years, you're you're familiar with it. He says this, he says, he puzzled and puzzled till his puzzler was sore. Then the Grinch thought of something he hadn't before. Maybe Christmas, he thought, doesn't come from a store. Maybe Christmas perhaps means a little bit more. So he says, yeah, Christmas, I guess, isn't really about presents. It's got to be about something else. And if you remember the story, the Grinch concludes that Christmas is about being together. It's all about being together. And that's a wonderful thing, isn't it? I mean, we love being with those that we love the most. We love being with our community, with our friends, our family, especially around Christmas. It's just, it's it's a deep human need that each one of us has, and it's a wonderful gift when we actually experience it. But is that really what Christmas is all about? We've been going through Luke's Christmas narrative as a church this month, and to tonight, we get to the end of his Christmas narrative. We actually see in Luke chapter 2, beginning in verse 22, we see Mary and Joseph, we see that Jesus has already been born, that he's now about maybe six weeks old, and they're bringing him like a devout Jewish family would up to the temple to Jerusalem, and there they're gonna do all the things that a devout Jewish family would do. They're gonna do all these uh, rituals and law, they're gonna fulfill these laws, and they're going to dedicate, they're gonna offer up as a dedication their child Jesus in the service of God. It's an incredible scene, but then the camera pans to a man named Simeon. We don't know if he's old, we don't know if he's young. There's only about 11 verses in the Bible about this man, but we do know some things. We know that this man was a holy man. We know that he loved God and served him and was faithful to God all of his life. But we also know that even in the midst of his faithfulness, he's a man that's marked by waiting. He's marked by waiting. And that's the first thing I want us to consider tonight together is that Christmas is actually all about waiting for something. It's about waiting for something. If you would look with me in verse 25, it says this, now there was a man in Jerusalem whose name was Simeon. And this man was righteous and devout, waiting for the consolation of Israel. And the Holy Spirit was upon him. And it had been revealed to him by the Holy Spirit that he would not see death before he had seen the Lord's Christ. Now, I doubt that there's nobody in here that likes waiting. You know, if I said, does anybody like waiting? The only people that raise their hands are the people who like attention, right? You know, those are the only people that are gonna do that. And I I know right now there's a lot of kids in this room and you're doing a great job, by the way, you know? You're doing a great job. But I imagine that if you're anything like me when I was a kid, December felt like four months long because I was just waiting and waiting and waiting for Christmas morning. And so a lot of you, if you're a kid, you're in here tonight and you're waiting. You've been waiting all month, what feels like maybe an eternity to open up a gift tomorrow morning, unless you like to ruin Christmas and you're doing that tonight, you know, but I guess to each his own. So there's no judgment, but I am judging you a little bit, okay? Um, But yeah, I don't know what it is. It's a Gabby's dollhouse or a VR headset or whatever your Turbo Man doll is this year, right? But we're all waiting for something if you're a kid, you know? And so maybe you're an adult though, and and you're not going to lose sleep tonight, you know, because you're just so excited to see what's under the tree. But you're waiting for something, you know? You're waiting for something. Maybe you're just waiting for this really busy or difficult season to finally turn the page. And you're like, man, when I get to January 15th, whatever, 
It's going to be better. You know, or you're waiting for your unwanted circumstances to finally be resolved. Right? You're waiting for that prayer to finally be answered. Right? You're waiting for the love of your life to finally be introduced to you. Right? You're waiting for, I don't know, the angels to win a World Series, finally, you know? That's right. Or whatever your team is, pick your sport, I don't know. Or you're waiting for the scan to come back clean. You're waiting for the bill to say zero. You're waiting for the pregnancy set test to say positive, right? You're waiting for that someone to finally come home. You're waiting for that person to notice you or the the paperwork to finally be processed or you're waiting for that someone to finally change. And maybe that someone's you. Right? Or maybe you're here and you're like, I don't really, I don't know, nothing really comes to mind. But really, if you sit here tonight and you you think about the whole of your life and just all that it's amounted to, you sit here and and it just, it hasn't, you know, brought you to the place where you're like, yeah, I found the thing, right? You think to yourself tonight, there's got to be something more, right? Right? We're all waiting. We don't just wait in line and we don't just wait in SoCal traffic, right? We wait in life. And here, in this final Christmas story of Luke, we find another waiter, Simeon, and what's he waiting for? It says he's waiting for the consolation of Israel, Well, what's that? I mean, I think we think of the word consolation as like a secondary prize, right? That's the only context we often use it in. It's like, I didn't win the main thing, and so because of my disappointment, they're like, well, you can get this, you know, as a second place sort of thing. It's not the thing you wanted, but you're like, okay, I guess if there's nothing else, I'll take that. You know, that's what we think of consolation, But the word consolation, it just means it's the comfort that you receive from another person when you've experienced pain or loss. That's what it is. The shorthand definition for consolation is comfort. Christmas is all about comfort. And I think that's why we sing this time of year, O tidings of comfort and joy, comfort and joy. And we like comfort, don't we? I mean, I love comfort. I love comfort food, right? You're like, I can tell. And uh, that's fine. I'll enjoy my life, okay? Um, you might like comfort in other ways. You like comfort through distraction, right? Through entertainment, through a screen, whatever. You like comfort that comes from another person in your life, right? We all like comfort. And if you think about it, what it is that you're waiting for is something that will bring you comfort. They, they really go hand in hand, See, Simeon has spent his entire life waiting for the consolation that comes from the hand of God. Ever since Adam and Eve stood up on this earth and looked at God and said, you know what, I'm going to go my own way. And sin entered this world. God gave us a promise. And he said, a seed from the woman, surprisingly, will come. And he will be this consolation. He will be the redeemer. He will set the wrongs right. He will save. And Simeon's been waiting for this one. It's not second best. It's not off God's scrap heap saying, well, here, you at least have this. No, it's God's very best that he's waiting for because it's actually God himself. See, Christmas is all about waiting, but it's also all about receiving something. Christmas is all about receiving something. Look in verse 27. And he came in the spirit into the temple, and when the parents brought in the child Jesus to do for him according to the custom of the law, he took Jesus up in his arms and blessed God and said, Lord, now you are letting your servant depart in peace according to your word, for my eyes have seen your salvation, that you have prepared in the presence of all peoples a light for revelation to the Gentiles and for glory to your people, Israel. See, Christmas is all about receiving something. Maybe to put it another way, Christmas is all about the wait being over. It's about the wait being over. So this guy, Simeon, he goes to the temple and Mary and Joseph bring in six-week-old child, Jesus, 
and he walks right over to them, led by the Spirit of God, and he says, can I hold your baby, right? He actually doesn't even say that, right? He just takes the baby up into his arms. I mean, could you imagine if somebody in public or even at church, you didn't know, walked over and you said, can I hold your baby, right? You're gonna say, I don't know, no, probably not, right? Why do you wanna hold my baby, right? We just, stranger danger kind of stuff. But Simeon walks right over and just picks up the child Jesus into his arms because he's saying, this is the one. Here he is. He's the one I've been waiting for that God said, I would not see death until I saw this one that I've been waiting for. He picks him up and he sings, right? He blesses God and what does he say? He says, my eyes have seen salvation. Salvation. In the face of this child is the salvation of God. Salvation's not an idea, it's found in a person. He's coming to bring it. He sees the salvation of God in this child and he lifts his eyes and says, praise God, my eyes have seen it. Who is this salvation for? Is it just for Simeon? Well, no, because what does the rest of the song say? You have prepared in the presence of all peoples, verse 31, a light for revelation to the Gentiles and for glory to your people, Israel. Guys, do you see the implication of this? Right, Jesus is not just the one that Simeon has been waiting for his whole life. Jesus is the one that any person that has ever been born on this earth that has a beating heart and lungs that are filled with oxygen and release that oxygen, right? Any person that's ever been born in this world, he's the one they've been waiting for. They've been waiting for Jesus. He's who everyone has been waiting for whether they know it or not. Whether you know it or not, Jesus is the one that your heart has been waiting for. See, for Simeon, the wait was over, the search was off, he's received something, and he was holding in his arms the promised Savior. Uh, It's an exaggeration, but in my house, I feel like when I'm home, I spend about 80% of my time looking for something that's lost, okay? Um, It's someone's shoe or a piece of paper from school, or a book, or an article of clothing, or something, right? And every once in a while, I mean, you, most of you probably feel this, right? But every once in a while, we gotta get out the door, and, and we're like, hey guys, we can't find Isla's shoe, or something, you know? And we're like, everyone needs to search the house, we gotta find this shoe, because we need to leave, you know? And so we all go on this search, all over the house, and inevitably, somebody finally yells out from some corner of the house, I found it, and we all gather around, and we all go, where was it? And it was always in like the most obvious place possible or like the weirdest place possible. It's always like, how did I not see that? Or who put this here? You know, it's kind of one of those things, you know? But you wanna know what I've never done. The pattern's always the same. You wanna know what I've never done. I've never looked at the thing and then said, sweet, all right, I'm gonna keep looking, right? I'm just gonna keep looking. Of course not, why? Because we found the thing, right? The search is off. Do you notice Simeon picks up this child and he doesn't put the child back into the arms of Mary and Joseph and then go about his life saying, well, maybe God will bring something else. That's not at all what happens. He calls off the search, he's received someone Right, he's receiving this comfort that he's been waiting for, and it changes his life. That's the last thing that I want you to see tonight, is that the comfort that Jesus brings, it'll change how you face tomorrow. It'll change how you face tomorrow. Because look at the beginning of his song, in verse 29. Look at the kind of comfort Jesus brought to his life. Lord, now you are letting your servant depart in peace according to your word. What word? Verse 26, it had been revealed to him by the Spirit that he would not see death before he had seen the Lord's Christ, the one born in the city of David, the Savior who is Christ the Lord. 
See, the consolation that Jesus brings comes with a kind of comfort that makes it possible to finally face death. I just want to know tonight, guys, is what you're waiting for strong enough? Is it thorough enough? Is it deep enough? That if it finally arrived, like your soul would let out this sigh of relief that was just like, yeah, I can die now. Can what you're waiting for do that? Can it do that? How is it even possible? Well, it's because the kind of consolation that Jesus brings, if it's what your heart is waiting for, it's a different kind of comfort because it actually comes at the expense of his own comfort. Because this child that's held in the arms of Simeon will one day be raised up from those arms and will be lifted up onto a cross and there he will die as a savior paying for the sins of all who would turn to him and say, I've been waiting for you. Please have mercy on me. It's for those who see them then get up from death three days later and walk out defeating death itself. If God could grant it to you tonight, if you can see it, right? If you can see it, This will change everything, everything. If you see Jesus and your heart sings out, call off the search, right? The wait is over. He's the one I've been waiting for, right? Then there is a consolation. There is a comfort that comes and it's not a second place kind of prize. It's not off of the scrap heap saying, well, this will have to do because it's God himself. His comfort, you guys, doesn't treat the symptom. It doesn't mask the disease and just ward off those symptoms for a few hours. No, it cures the disease. Nothing can console your soul like Jesus. Nothing can. What Jesus brings, it'll cause you to open your hands and allow you to finally say, yeah, I can depart in peace. I can depart in peace. Can what you're waiting for do that? It did for Simeon. Why? Because what he's been waiting for is God himself. If you think about it, maybe Christmas really is about being together. But it's about being together with God. It's having that peace brought between God and man, between you and God, so that one day when it comes to breathe your last, you face it with peace because you know that's the doorway to the unhindered light of being with God forever. Christmas is quite the amazing story. It is about light dawning in the darkness of our waiting so that one day God would bring us to a place where all that we know is light.